What is going on guys, Bodacious Steve here, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can get the brand new exotic Whisper of the Worm Sniper, also known as the Black Spindle. Now this sniper is tied to an exclusive quest found on Io. The first thing you're going to want to do is head to Lost Oasis on Io. Now you just gotta sit here and wait for the Taken Blight public event. It can't be any other public event, it has to be the Taken Blight public event. Once the public event shows up, you do not have to worry about specifically doing the public event. Your main goal is going to be looking for a boss, a Taken boss, that has spawned in the Lost Oasis. Now this boss is going to either be a Taken Knight or a Taken Cabal. Once you find him, be sure to take him out as quick as you can. After you have killed him, there's going to be a Taken Blight that spawns, and this Blight is going to be in the same spot every time you do this. I would also like to point out that this boss that you gotta kill can spawn anywhere in the Lost Oasis. So with your fire team of three, be sure to spread out and find this guy as quickly as you can. Alright, so as soon as you spawn into this mission, you're going to be in a Lost Sector on Io. So as soon as you spawn in, immediately turn left and there is going to be a route that you can jump on. Jump on that and then you can go from that root or branch, whatever you want to call it, up to the waterfall. There will be a Taken Blight at the top of the waterfall. Once you destroy that, there's going to be a hole that appears right below it. Head down and keep on going. Just follow the path, it's relatively easy. Keep on going and what you're going to do is you're going to notice that there are some red lights. What you want to do is just follow the red lights. If there is a platform that is red, make sure you are on that because that is where you're exactly where you are supposed to be. Also, keep in mind that throughout this entire quest, this side mission, you are timed. You have a 20 minute time limit, so you do need to hurry. It is most likely going to take you a few times to get this down. We probably did this, you know, 20 or 30 times before we got it which was crazy. So be sure you are quick, but also careful. So once you get to this part, there's going to be a block that you stand on, which basically acts as an elevator. Once you get to this part, you go up and then you're gonna stand on another platform on the side. Rather than going straight, you're going to end up turning left right once you get to the end of this first platform. I got turned around on this a lot, so I just wanted to point that out just so you guys know where to go right away. For this part right here, you're just going to have to jump back and forth between each platform. Be sure you are very agile because those blights will blast you off and kill you and you'll have to start at the beginning of this part. Once you reach the end of this, there will be a small opening at the very end where you can see a blue light. This is going to lead you to the next room where there are a bunch of cylinder shaped entrances that you could go into. Now there is only one entrance that is correct, and it is the one that is in the back right. There will be a ledge that you can land on, run all the way to the back, and then go through that back right entrance. This is going to lead you to the jump puzzle room. Now in the jump puzzle room, what you got to do is climb the wall all the way up to the very top in a clockwise direction. So in this room, there are little ledges that you can jump on. With each ledge, it gets a bit higher, so keep climbing up the side of the wall and going around the room. This part can be super tricky if you are not patient. There were a bunch of times that we did not complete this because we had somebody who didn't complete the jump puzzle or we were down a man just because they kept falling and they had to restart the jump puzzle. So I can't emphasize enough, whenever you get to this part, definitely take your time and make sure every jump counts because if you do mess up right before you make the very end, then your team might be down a man and that might be the difference between you getting this weapon and you starting over. So as you can see, there's a bunch of ledges just on the side. They have grass on them, so that's how you know that they're good to jump on. You can mantle, but I would not trust that if I were you. So yeah, you just keep going along the side in a clockwise direction. I would suggest to take it a bit slower than what you're seeing in this gameplay. But at this point, I had gotten it down because we had done this so many times. Once you reach this point right here, you're gonna actually go down. There's a green patch right there, as you can see. Land on that, and then you crouch, and there's going to be a hole that you land in right there. So you go all the way down to the bottom, and then there's going to be another ledge that you see right here that you're gonna land on. 
follow this around and then you jump and there's gonna be a platform so once you reach this platform if you look down below there is a light there's going to be a platform that you can land on keep following the path and then you will reach this red room head to the very end of this room or hallway or whatever you want to call it there will be an entrance to the next room on the right now the next room is the first ad wave room what you got to do is take out all of the ads you do not have to worry about any of the blights at all all you got to do is take out all of the ads when it comes to the ad rooms there are some priorities priority number one you have to take out all of the knights and all of the wizards first because they're going to be doing the most damage to you if you do not take them out first they're going to be a major headache and you will lose a lot of time number two you got to be running arc strider preferably two if not three arc strider is so nasty when it comes to taking out these ads just because of radiant flux you can literally use this super for so long and take out the majority of the ads number three is staying alive sounds simple enough it is essential when it comes to beating this mission because of the orbs that people can drop with their super now what we would do is we would have one person pop their arc strider in the first room and then we would have somebody pop one in the second room and then that first person would pick up the orbs from that guy who popped it in the second room and we would just keep going around in a circle popping arc striders picking up each other's orbs which really helped because having that arc strider was so good at taking out the ads we also used the aikilo shotgun which was really good we had two people rocking that and then we had one person who was rocking the tractor cannon once you have cleared that third ad room, there are going to be a few more ads that you gotta take out, and then you can go down into the boss room. This is a big old room with a whole bunch of blights and a whole bunch of ads and three bosses. So what you're gonna have to do is take out all three bosses. Once you kill all three of them, then you're gonna get yourself the black spindle. Again, you do not have to take out the blights to beat this. At first we thought you might have to do that, but you do not. They may get in the way a bit, but it does not matter. Taking out those blights is just going to add time and you do not have time on your side. So the strategy we ran to beat this was like I said, having two arc striders, a tractor cannon, and then we also had two Aikilo shotguns. What we did is whenever we first got in there, we had somebody pop an arc strider take out all the ads and then that spawns the bosses whenever the boss is spawned we popped another arc strider and did as much damage to the boss as we could and then we just went from there on each side of the room is a tunnel identical to each other so there's one on the left and one on the right that is the place you gotta stay if you want to stay alive is basically the only place you have covered. So when we didn't have supers to pop on the bosses, what we did was we had one person who would boop them with the tractor cannon, and then we would go in with our Aikilo shotguns. Make sure you have your Aikilo shotgun with void on it. That way, whenever the boss is booped, you do as much damage to it as possible. I was also running a hard light just because I wanted to have an elemental weapon for every situation so that's why I ran hard light that was doing a lot of damage with the tractor cannon as well I would definitely suggest going void stuff like I was saying you gotta run tractor cannon gotta do Aikilos if you have it and definitely arc striders this is exactly why I love destiny going for an exotic weapon doing something that is difficult and overcoming and beating it is the best feeling in the world when it comes to playing a video game with your friends. I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to let me know if this how-to guide really helped you out on getting the black spindle. Like and subscribe for more Destiny 2 content like this, and I will see you guys in the next video.